welcome, welcome, welcome back, family. Welcome back to Let's Speak It Out Loud. I am your host, Goddess Candace the Alicorn. And once again, it is my honor and my pleasure to be here with you guys today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And if this is your first time here, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Speak It Out Loud. And if this is not your first time, what up, Soul Tribe? I've been missing (laughs) y'all. Now, for you new listeners, I am an acquired taste. This is a podcast for copper-colored people of higher vibrations having insightful conversations. And I may say something that may offend you. I may say something that may hurt your feelings. But what I'm going to say mostly is it's all love and it's all truth. Nothing here is vindictive, guys. Knowledge has no purpose if the higher consciousness doesn't inspire it. And I am definitely inspired by higher conscious. So if you find that you don't like this podcast, that's what they make remotes for. Turn the channel. There's plenty of other podcasts out there. All right, y'all. Soul Tribe, y'all showing up and showing out once again all over the doggone world. We got podcast listeners from everywhere. Y'all, Ireland, 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 Amsterdam. Okay, we got podcast listeners from Australia, all over the world, guys, and I love you all, and I thank you so much. You guys just got this podcast to 30,000 plus downloads. Some of you guys follow me on Facebook or Instagram, and when I posted the other day that we hit 30,000 downloads, a lot of you congratulated and this and that. But what I found was this, y'all. I don't have a lot of followers, but people are listening, which lets me know (laughs) there's some lovers and some haters in the bunch. And I love all y'all. Everybody needs a hater. So haters, I thank you as well. But to my soul tribe, those of you who are dedicated, I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. And I am here to uplift your spirit, guys. Okay? So thank you uh, once again to... To everybody who donates to the podcast, I appreciate you. Um, You guys help everything go. Everything go smoothly. You help me upgrade. You help me do what I need to do. You help me come up with content. By your donations, I succeed. And what I give back to you in the even exchange is my pure love, light, and unadulterated truth. Because this podcast, is about me speaking my truth. And if I can speak my truth to the world unconditionally and unfiltered, then maybe I can help someone else in this world. And that is my purpose, to let you know that you are worthy and you are worth it. And don't let any mofo tell you any different. If anybody tells you that you can't, you won't, you don't need to, get them the fuck away from you, all right? Because they ain't doing nothing but hating and trying to bring you down. They hate you because they ain't you. They mad because they can't do what you do. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And if you would like to donate to the podcast, guys, the information is listed below on no matter what platform you are listening to me on. All right? If you want to listen to me on YouTube, that's fine as well. Um, All of the podcasts, once I post them, they automatically go over to YouTube. So if you want to check me out on YouTube, it's the same thing. Let's speak it out loud, all right? So guys, how have y'all been doing? Because I've been doing great. Y'all been showing up and showing out for me. And I appreciate it to no end. I can't tell y'all enough. I mean, this shit is crazy. You know, the 30,000 downloads that I got, do you realize in June, I only had 2,000 downloads and now y'all got to be to 35,000? 35? Because like I said, when I posted the 30. That was just a few days ago. Then I look back the other day. Y'all going crazy over Metatron's cue, intentions, focus. How are you speaking to yourself? And spirit is always watching. Y'all been going crazy on that one. Y'all must have been having some stuff going on in your life. Because spirit is always watching. So no matter what people try to do to you or think they're doing to you or smiling in your face or this and that, that and this, spirit is always watching. And I want y'all to know. Remember this, whenever you do something to somebody out of hatred, spirit gives it back to you tenfold. So that's why I don't worry about my haters or people be lying on me and this and that. That's why I speak my story and my truth. I am the narrator of my story. And that's why I speak it out loud, y'all. 
So let's speak it out loud today, y'all. <clears throat> I've missed y'all. I've been doing some things, chilling, trying to get some stuff together. But other than that, life is beautiful. That's all I can say. With the ups and downs, life is beautiful. The ebb and flow, life is beautiful. Remember, I am allowing the journey to be just as rewarding as the destination. And so on this journey today, guys, I came across something. My cousin and I were having a conversation. And I came across this thing. We were talking about Enneagrams. And I said, what the hell is an Enneagram? She was like, oh, my God, it's just so great. I love it. The personality thing. And and they have personality tests. And so I looked it up, the Enneagram. And the first thing I said, y'all, and y'all probably said it when you looked at the Enneagram, that picture that I have on this podcast for this episode. It's Metatron's Cube watered down. Okay? It's Metatron's Cube watered out. It's a piece taken out. And like I said, yeah, most religions have taken pieces out of sacred geometry and used it for their symbols, their signs, their magic. Because I don't care what you call the most high creator. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care if you say Yahweh. I don't care if you say Allah. I don't care if you say Buddha. I don't care if you say Jesus. I don't care if you say God. I don't care if you say <clears throat> the most high creator. It still all boils down to one thing. The mathematical equations of the universe that is I am. And this Enneagram is nothing any different. It's just a piece that was taken apart that someone has broken down and they're going to explain the attributes that have been put to it. So I'm going to help y'all out through this. And y'all could probably go after you hear this podcast and do you an Enneagram test. So you like Enneagram, you keep saying it. Candace, what the hell is that? What a God is about to tell you. So first of all, let me tell you, the Enneagram, the name, comes from the Greek origin, Ennea, which means nine. And in Greek, gamma means something that can be drawn or written. So this system of the Enneagram that everybody's going so crazy about, it's an analysis that represents nine personality uh, classifications or personality types. Nine. You know, we're going to get into these numbers here today, y'all. That nine. It's your intellectual mind meeting your quote-unquote personal mode of behavior. You know, they say there are about nine different types in the Enneagram spectrum. And these types are divided into three degrees or three different variants, which we're going to get into. But according to the Enneagram, each of the nine personality types is defined by a particular core belief about how the world works. You know, this belief drives your deepest motivations and fears. It shapes your worldview and the perspective in which you see the world and how the people Around you, y'all see each other. So that's basically what it is. It's a system of analysis. That that's what Enneagram is. But that picture that's depicted is a watered-down version of Metatron's cube, which is sacred geometry. So the Enneagram is not something new under the sun, like my grandma always told me. It's a piece of <laughs> sacred geometry. So for those who don't know that, that's what it is. It's a piece of sacred geometry. And like I say, the Enneagram is mostly used for personal self-knowledge and personality development. Because you know we're all about anything on self-knowledge in here. So when you think about it, people don't really think about personality development, do you? Hmm. Think about that. What do people consider a personality? I don't like her personality. Her personality fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because there are matches where personalities get along and personalities don't. Okay? So the way they numbered this system is quite interesting. And y'all can look into it a whole lot more after the podcast. Or maybe you can look into it now if you're sitting there listening to me and looking at your computer. But it's a very powerful tool to better help you understand yourself and self-reflection. And introspection, you know, I'm all about introspection. You know, it's the for, forgotten knowledge about human nature. That's really what it's about. You know, people study so many different things. 
human nature. You need to understand that on these board of directors from all these corporations that we purchase things from since this world is turning us into the ever living consumer from life to tragic death, whether it's the food industry, the medical industry, the, the tobacco, the gun, the alcohol industry, the sex industry, it, it, it they are psychologists and psychiatrists who sit on these boards of these businesses to understand the psyche of people so they can make things more addictive or more attractive to you to make you buy their product. Because now in this world, we are nothing but the commodities. You know, money is just a tool to bring things to you. But there's a group of people on this planet who want all of it. <laughs> and they can't take it with them. But it's just a tool. And it's not the most important tool. The most important tool is that breath in your body. The most important tool is what makes your heart pump. Okay? So, psychologists and psychiatrists use this tool to analyze people, places, and things. I need you to understand that. So, this nine-pointed symbol within the sacred geometry... It's been used as a road map of the natural processes in human nature for thousands of years. It really tells you how to get along with people, what to expect, how to manipulate people, and how to guide people. This is very interesting, but the most important part of it is I need y'all to understand and overstand it's about self-guidance. It also teaches you and makes you aware of the things that people are using to manipulate you because you don't know. These are your ancient tools. This is a part of you. This symbol, not the word Enneagram. That, that's a word the humans gave to it. This sacred geometry of it all, of this symbol, is you. So you need to better understand what this thing is. And so do I. So, like I said, this process has been studied and used for thousands and thousands of years. And this symbol, I will repeat it to the end of time, is just a scaled-down version of the Metatron's Cube, which is complete. You know, it represents all source energy, the Metatron Cube does. It's a complex structure that contains all the sacred shapes of the universe. You know, they call it the five platonic solids. And y'all know I have trouble saying the names of the platonic solids. Like, you got the star tetrahedron, the hexahedron, the octahedron, a dosiahedron, and icosahedron. That's the one that gets me. Remember? We talked about that on Metatron's Cube. So I want you to have, be clear when I tell you that the Enneagram comes from within Metatron's cube. It's not new. It's not, it's not some new invention that the people that they attribute to inventing it, they may have invented the system, but you didn't invent the mathematics of the universe, which this comes from. So the symbol that you guys put together of the Enneagram, it illustrates the nine different aspects of personality and human consciousness. Okay? Nine different aspects of personality and human consciousness, each representing different automatic habits of thinking and feeling and behaving. And like I said, so today, psychology and psychologists are using this very ancient wisdom to reveal why we are the way that we are and how to make positive and lasting changes within ourselves. But they've created a field of it. So just like I'm telling you this, because I believe in us working on ourselves, some people do need psychiatrists. I ain't going to say people don't. And I'm not a psychiatrist. But what I do know is, and I'm not a psychologist by degree, but psychologically, you can help all kinds of people learn themselves because that's all these people do. Psychiatrists gives you pills. Psychologist deals with the psyche and inside of you. You know, so I need y'all to understand that this is ancient wisdom. 
And like I said, my grandma always said to us, there's nothing new under the sun. And I know she was correct. Because science, science, all forms of it, you know, seem to be renaming and marketing ancient wisdom. And the mathematical equations of all matter in the universe as something newly discovered. When in fact, it's actually older than linear time. You hear me? They act like, oh, this new thing. Oh, mm, the Enneagram so great about your personality. But these are tools that the most high universal creator put here for us to understand this ship that we're in, this vessel, your body. Everything is a mathematical equation with inside our body, from our health to our life to our death. And as Sister Adama says, the key is leaving his plane without dying. So we have to learn and use all the tools that people are hiding from us. So I don't want y'all to get enamored and twisted by this Enneagram because it's all sacred geometry, which is all every human being, every living being, every animal, plant, air, wind, fire, earth. Everything in existence is sacred geometry. The mathematical equations of Metatron's cube is the seat of life. It's the seat of the most high creator. So I need y'all to understand that. And like I'm saying, I ain't saying nothing about your religion because some of y'all religions get funny. I'm just going to say, you Christians, you um, that's the devil, you blaspheming. I'm going to need you to wake up and learn something. Learn something about yourself, okay? Because the first thing that the Most High Creator gave every species, the first law of nature is the law of self-preservation. You understand? That's the first law of nature. So I need you to understand that. These are tools that the universal creator gave in us. This, all this stuff is inside of us. You may read it online or read it in a book and, oh, wow, they have this new theory. It's not new. It's not new. It's not new. It's older than ink, damn it. <laughs> it's older than carving in stone. It's older than the breath of existence. The sacred geometry is. So I need you to understand that. You understand me? I need you to stop being in the delusion and the illusion of the latest new fad. Because this is not a fad. This is you. And I want to point that out to you because I want to empower you to be a better you. Why? Because I'm empowering me to be a better me. That's my purpose. And if I can help somebody as I walk along, then my living will not be in vain. I told y'all, that's my favorite song I like to hear my mama sing. You know, it's not newly discovered. And mathematics is the universal language of all. And numbers are the key to uplift and upliftment and elevation of ourselves. Intellectual minds meeting our personal mode of behavior. Okay? So let's get into the aspects of this thing, this Enneagram. The aspects in intentional and in the internal logic of this broken down part of Metatron's cube called the Enneagram. You know, and I know y'all appreciate the depth of the wisdom contained in this simple soul tribe. I know you do, because I know you understand that mathematics is the key. Because I know you understand, that's why they don't teach us mathematics very well in school. And today, oh my goodness, and I'm so grateful and thankful that my nine-year-old granddaughter, because girls have a hard time with math, and it's set up that way. Because if a woman knows <laughs> math, she begins to put it together and equate things with her creation. And oh boy, if you understand the mathematical equation, which is I am, which is she, which is divine feminine, which is creation, we could change the universe and stop all this shit in an instant, guys. Just going to put that out there and leave that right there. So I know y'all, y'all appreciate the depth of the wisdom contained in what I'm speaking to you. So the power of the Enneagram, 
Like I say, it comes from ancient wisdom. In the ancient wisdom, all the ancients knew that geometry was sacred. It's the outer in the exact same mathematical equation of the structures of creation and growth. You know, the process of all living things. I can't say that to y'all enough. All living things in the universe, you know, in the dimensions, the dimensions of a seashell, the dimensions of a snowflake, the dimensions of an apple, the DNA and the dimensions and the makeup of an elephant, of a plant, of you and I, everything that exists, seen and unseen. It's also the development of the human psyche. All of it's still about mastering oneself and self-knowledge. Every aspect of it, y'all, from the vessel of our consciousness is housed in which the human body or the mind versus the brain. You know, every aspect of it, every, from the vessel that is our consciousness, you know, that's housed in this human body or in the mind versus the brain, all of it. We are one with existence, uniquely, individually, and the same. I'm going to say that again. We are all one with existence, uniquely, individually, and the same. We are one. You know? So let's break down this whole symbol. Okay, so you got the outer circle. We all know what a circle is. Or do we? You know, if you don't, I'm going to talk to you about it. You know, that circle's 360 degrees. Erica Badu, if y'all know nothing else, <laughs> she taught you that. <laughs> My cipher keeps moving like a rolling stone. On and on and on and on. So, you know, the Enneagram, the, it, that circle is the foundation of the Enneagram. The circle represents infinity, wholeness, unity in the natural order of the universe. Once again, 360 degrees. The oneness and eternal nature of the most high creator. Your higher self. The unity in all things seen and unseen. The cosmic creation the presence. Also, the circle creates a boundary around our interior, which opens up the possibility of moving beyond our conditional and conditioned selves. In other words, since the inside of the Enneagram, the nine ways of being in the world, the circle is there to remind us that we can choose to step outside of these ways into something more expansive within our being. Okay, so then you got this triangle. This triangle, it represents the law of three. Three forces that enter into all acts of creation. Now, if y'all don't know what the three forces are, I'm going to skim it. Active. Passive and neutral or reconciling. The three forces that enter into all acts of creation is active, passive, and neutral or reconciling. You know, the Trinity, it shows up in most religions. The Trinity, the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. The Trinity shows up everywhere because it's that three. You know, so you see the law of three and the three types that make up the inner triangle of the Enneagram, representing three aspects of bringing something into existence or being, an advancing force, a resisting force, and a reconciling force. You understand? It's representing three aspects of bringing something into existence or being. Number one, an advancing force, a resisting force, and a reconciling force. Think about that. 
You know, it comes in between and brings the two together. Then you have the hexed. You know, then you have the hesed. Different terminology. The hexad. Different articulation. H-E-X-A-D. The hexad. It's a group of, or a set of six. But with that being said, the symbol represents the law of seven. See, the law of three relates to how things come into being. But the law of seven represents how things happen in the process. You understand? Three, how things come into being. Seven, how it happens in the process. A cycle process of transformation, of reflection. And that reflection that you have to understand is that the only thing constant in the universe is change. Okay? You might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm kind of lost. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to use music for the sake, because you know I'm a musician. I've been doing music as long as I've been breathing. Let me take a drink of my water, because I'm about to get deep for y'all, okay? So understand this. The law of seven. This is how I understood it immediately from being in music theory. The law of seven is the basis for a seven note musical octave or vibration. See, if you don't know, musical notes are vibrations. The universe is a vibration. Color is a vibration. Breath is a vibration. Sound is a vibration. Thought is a vibration of light. Light is a vibration. Darkness is a vibration. So, see, in nature, the universe at large, nothing continues forever in a straight or direct line. Everything must deviate at definite intervals. So, like a standard seven-note scale plus the one note to a new octave, you get eight notes. So with, when I say the law of seven, and we talked about the hexit, when it says a set of six, you have the new octave. You understand? Y'all gonna think about that. You got the new octave. That's why it's the law of seven. So in the seven scale, the standard note seven scale, you have plus the one note to a new note and a new octave. So you have two notes, but they're on different octaves, which makes it eight notes. You understand? So, all right. So like you got, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Basic scale. What the law of seven says is that within those eight notes, there are two definitive intervals. One between me and fa, and one between C and the new do, the top of the scale. So on an energetic level, this means that the vibrations which are increasing or decreasing at a consistent rate naturally slow down at the two intervals. Octaves can ascend where vibrations increase, or descend where vibrations decrease. You get it? Octaves, vibrations can ascend where vibrations increase, moving faster, or descend where the vibration decreases. Higher planes versus lower planes. Higher planes, the vibrations spin faster. The octaves spin faster. Lower planes, it doesn't take as much for the lower vibration as it does for the higher vibration. There's more effort for the higher vibration. Like I said with the scale, do, that means nothing. Do, I have to push the diaphragm. You see, 
it moves faster. It moves faster. The energy, the vibration. Do, do. It moves faster. So, the hexit shape represents nothing happens in a straight line. There are always highs and lows along the increasing or decreasing vibration. The always changing nature of a being. Everything evolves or devolves. You know? Everything evolves or devolves. Predicted by their nature or by the forces at play. Law of seven in musical octaves. <clears throat> the pier... Oh, Lord, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I was saying, the law of seven is in musical octaves. The periodic table and the days of the week. You know, I know y'all understand, Soul Tribe, because we are higher vibrations having insightful conversation. Y'all know I'm getting tongue-tied here. But I love y'all. I want y'all to understand the sacred geometry of this. I don't want y'all to be fooled by someone telling you this is something new, this is something great. This is you, okay? This is you. That's the part people leave out when they do things. This is you. And it should be resonating with you through your vibration, like, oh my goodness. Because when things are real, it resonates through your vibration, okay? So then there's that nine. So what is nine? Nine is a powerful number. What is it? So nine constitutes the highest achievement in completion. Y'all, there's no other, other number higher than nine. It's the highest single digit number in the decimal system. Yeah, it is a number higher than nine. You got 10, 11, 12. Nope, 10 is one. 11 is two. 12 is three when you add them together. As far as the single digit numbers, it's only zero to nine. You understand? Because after you get the nine, you go to the zero again, which makes 10. You understand that? So, Nine is a complete cycle of growth. The number of perfection, unity, truth, oneness. With all that being said, y'all. This Enneagram is used to represent personality types. That's all it is. Nine personality types. That's what this Enneagram is for. Nine types placed in three different degrees of variance. Well, what are those three degrees or those three variants? All right, so I'm gonna break this down. When you look at that Enneagram, the nine personality types being, number one, the perfectionist or the reformer. Number two, the giver. Number three, the achiever. Number four, the individualist. Number five, the investigator. Number six, the skeptic. Number seven, the enthusiast. Number eight, the challenger. And number nine, the peacemaker. And then they divide them by three, three, six, nine, into three different variants. The first being the heart type, and then the head types, and then the body type. So you got nine different personality types divided into three different variants. Now, this is what's interesting to me. How do you find this information out to find out um, what your Enneagram number is or your personality type? Most places are going to charge you. I found a few places online that do it for free, but they'll tell you it's free. Um, most of them, they'll tell you it's free and ask for your email address and then it's locked. Do you want your full this and that? I ain't knocking y'all hustle. However, this is sacred geometry, guys. Sacred geometry is not hidden. I want you to understand that. And the reason I'm bringing this to you because this is not something new. This is not something different. This is just something that's been hidden from you about your higher self. So as I did one of the Enneagram tests, I was an eight borderline nine. Hmm. Which is different from my life path number because my life path number is a seven. The numbers in my name is a seven. OK, 
Okay? Ooh. And this new year coming up, 2023, is a seven. Y'all, that's three sevens. This is my year. Y'all better get it going. Look into your higher self. Find your superpowers. Find your attributes. Find what it is for you to manifest and fly. You are the conscious creator of your journey. They make you think you can't do anything. You got to sit and pray and wait. God says nothing happens without works. You got to do the work. And I'm going to tell you that to no end. You might not want to hear that. But you got to do the work. You got to put in some work. Well, the, I'm just going to sit here and wait on the Lord. Keep waiting. The Lord will send you five ships to pick your ass up while you in the ocean on the raft about to drown. And you will die. And when you when you see the Lord, whatever you believe, well, God, why you ain't come get me? God gonna say, I sent your dumb ass five ships. But it didn't come the way you expected. You expected it to come this way. You thought I was going to fly down with hair slinging all over my head going, ha, oh, and the angels and harps was going to be singing. So I'm going to need y'all to wake up and look at your life because the tools are here. The creator already gave you all the tools to ascend and be what you're supposed to be. The conscious creative force, the reflection of the eye and eye. I came here. In the image of the creator. To learn how to create in the image of the creator. Again. I was created in the image of the creator. To learn how to create in the image of the creator. Why do you think the creator sees everything? And why do you think? <laughs> they say the most high sits high and looks low. Because the lowest creature is a camera. You know how video cameras are everywhere all over the world and some places have more than the others? Well, the creator got a video camera too. It's called a roach. It's called an ant. It's called you. Everything you do and you see, the universe sees. Because you are a conscious, beautiful extension of the universe. A spiritual being having a human experience. You understand me? So... I come to y'all today because it, it was just quite interesting to me when I saw this. When I saw the Enneagram, I was thinking I'm going to learn something new. <laughs> you know, there's a triangle between the Enneagram points 9, 3, and 6. And an irregular hexagon that connects the outer parts and the circle. All together. And I'm telling y'all, all this is is another form that represents unity of human life. <laughs> unity of human life and wholeness. Unity with us and the planet. Unity with every living being, every living thing. And like I told y'all, when we stop seeing everybody else as them and us, us, that's when things will change on this planet. When we stop seeing everybody else as other, that's when things will change. That's when we'll stop doing things. But it's not everybody's fault that we are such a wicked, evil place. Because you got to understand something. It's set up this way for you not to know yourself. And the most high creator tells you to thine own self be true. Is that not true? Is that not true or not? All you pastors and preachers and this and that, I can't even stand to listen to some of y'all because y'all ain't talking about nothing to uplift people. You saying the same story that I heard when I was a child, when I told my mama, I don't want to go to church no more. They say the same thing. You're saying the same thing. And if every religion was right, we would not be in the condition that we are in in the world. Because everybody, every religion thinks they're right. Every religion thinks they're right. But knowledge has no purpose if a higher consciousness doesn't inspire it. And you can take that how you want to take that. And I ain't judging nobody. I'm talking about my personal life. You can choose to worship the way you choose to worship. I ain't going to kill you, hate you, do you, nothing. 
I'm saying, hmm, you know, I'm here to empower you to live a better life, to become your higher self. But I'm not here to heal you. That's not what I'm here to do. You and your higher self have to do that work. I can give you the tools. I'm a tool, just like Metatron's cube, just like this Enneagram, just like any other spiritual tool on this vibration to activate your superpower, just like chakras, just like any other part of the walk of life. I'm not here to heal you. You and your higher self have to do that self work. You got to meet your higher self. I'm here to empower you to be brave enough to actually tell yourself some truth and look within to see and to hear and converse with your higher self, the universal creative source within. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. I am here to become a better me. I am allowing the journey to be just as rewarding as the destination. Like I told y'all about the different octaves in the law of seven and the different vibrations. Everything is ebb and flow. Everything is ascending and descending. Everything is a higher vibration and a lower vibration. But one thing you must know, everything is vibrational. Guys, so I love you. I love you all. I love me. But I can't love you unless I love me. Even those of you who don't love me. Even those of you who try to do me wrong. Even those of you who hate me and try to smile on my face. That's why I'm not accessible. Guys, it's okay not to be accessible to the world. You understand me? I know you see me like, but you accessible. You, you here on this podcast. Yeah, but you're not coming to my house. Don't try it. Mm-mm. Don't run up on me. You don't know me like that. Because <laughs> I ain't going to run up on you. Every time you see me, I'm going to be peaceful. I'm going to be respectful. You know? I'm loving and I'm giving, but everybody doesn't deserve that. Everybody doesn't deserve that because everybody doesn't know or appreciate it when someone's truly there because they've, they've never experienced it. They can't be something that they know nothing about, which is loving, caring. And that's what these personality types are about knowing your personality type knowing what you are instinctively on autopilot for for your higher vibrations and what you can be instinctively on autopilot for for your lower vibrations whether it's your zodiac whether it's your numerology whether it's your tarot all of those are tools you know I just want y'all to know and understand and love yourself. But I'm going to say this, y'all. All All of this with different personality types. People are wicked in this world. So the one good thing about this tool, no matter how they're presenting the Enneagram, it helps you understand different people and understand how to be accordingly in this world with yourself. Keep yourself safe, you know. It teaches you that If you're talking to a damn idiot, stop talking to them because they haven't evolved high enough. Or if you're speaking with higher consciousness, learn because we all are teachers and we all are students. And I love being both. I am a student of the universal most high creator that is inside of me. And if you think you know it all, you don't. You might know a lot, but the wisest people that have ever existed No, no matter what they learn, they still don't know anything. (laughs) I don't care your higher consciousness. They still don't know anything. Because you're always a student. Whether you're on this plane, an interdimensional plane, 3D, 5D, 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D, 8D, or any other plane. Whether you're astral projecting or turning your body into a spaceship for time travel. You're always learning. And I have a thirst for learning. And what I do like about this whole Enneagram part of Metatron's Cube, I'm going to call it that, because it's all, just like I said, it's a piece of the cube. It's a piece of the puzzle. 
just like most religions are pieces of the puzzle, how they've scattered the truth all over the world and named them different things. Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, all this stuff. Judaism, they named it all different type of shit. But the fact still remains. Universal knowledge and universal law is not to be hoarded by anyone. Understand that. So the one thing I do like about this personality thing, it makes me look at things from a different perspective. Because I, I have to say this, y'all. I'm coming up on about 45 minutes, but I have to say this before we go. I, actually, this podcast was not supposed to be on this. It was supposed to be on Shaquella Robinson. Because my soul was so hurt behind what has happened with Shaquella Robinson. And if you don't know, if you hadn't seen it in the news, this is a worldwide case. Thanks to the YouTubers. I want to thank every single YouTuber who has been out there pressing this shit. Because the news was not picking it up. The news was not saying anything. The news on TV that y'all be watching on these channels, they are actors anyway. It has to have a momentum for them to talk about it or it has to be dictated to them by their handlers and holders and, 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 and the five to six conglomerates who actually own all the media in the world. What shall I say in this country? There's five to six companies that own all the media and television stations. So what we're getting, I love the fact of the independent people on YouTube who are doing the work. Some of y'all could really be some FBI agents because y'all own this shit. But if you haven't heard about Shaquilla Robinson, young sister, 25 years old, same age as my youngest son, 25 years old, entrepreneur, beautiful sister, entrepreneur. Sister, yes, a black girl. She took six friends to Cabo, Mexico with her. And they murdered her. And then lied about it and called her parents and said she died of alcohol poisoning. Now, it's alleged that the police were paid off and this and that, that and this. And then, as it's coming out in the news, if you've seen it, the autopsy report from Mexico says she died of alcohol poisoning. Nobody did anything on her. Well, the, the, not the autopsy report, the coroner's report. Excuse me, I misspoke. They say it said that she died of alcohol poisoning, and that's the story that they told her parents, the her friends. But what's crazy about this, these six people, she paid for the whole trip. All of it, beautiful villa, everything. And then they filmed this fight. And when they finally got the baby back to the United States, her neck was broken and her spine was cracked. And it's just so many inconsistencies. And the part that's making me speak on this right now, when I say personality types, there were some warnings that these people weren't her fucking friends. Because her best friend went with her as a guy, and, and this is hurtful. It's a guy. They'd been friends since they were children. They'd been on family trips together. He'd been everywhere with the family. Her mama and daddy didn't treated him like he was their son. They'd been friends since they were little kids. And he was filming and didn't stop it. And if y'all have seen some of the snippets of the video, he said, Shaquella, fight back. Shaquella, she was like, no. And then it's alleged that $17,000 plus was stolen from her because when they came back to the States, her body was still over there. And he brought her clothes and bags back to her mother. And all six of them still sticking with the story that she died of alcohol poisoning. Then y'all so damn dumb. This generation here, y'all put every fucking thing on Facebook or on social media. Then you got one person telling their side of the story. And the other person about, well, I wasn't there yet. I came the next day and this and that. And I was singing to and a hug and none and this and that. You bitches. You bitches. But I also saw the video. I saw the video of the best friend chanting over her and speaking spell words over her the night before when they got there. The night before the incident happened when they fought her and she unfortunately lost her beautiful life. We got us a dead person. We got our first kill. I saw that video. Y'all look it up. You'll find it. Look up the best friend chanting over her. And then he started speaking some... Mm, other realm words. So people have all their kind of um, 
assumptions uh, or, or beliefs of what possibly happened, but the FBI has owned this shit thanks to you YouTubers. I give all you YouTubers credit. They are on this shit because Mexico was just like, hmm, and now it makes Mexico look bad, and they're going to put an example. They got a warrant out for one of them. This is what I say. All six of them need to spend the rest of their lives in a motherfucking Mexican prison. Y'all so hard. Y'all so this, and y'all planned this. Y'all planned this because they were supposed to be going down there for a birthday party. But, you know, this generation of people, y'all post everything on there. Did nobody post no pictures or no birthday party? Y'all ain't had no dinners. Y'all ain't eating no scrimps as y'all talking. You know, ain't nobody had no scrimps showing tequila. And You know how y'all do at this age? I got three children, 25, 26, and 29. So I know y'all generation, y'all post everything. I have to tell one of my kids, stop putting all your goddamn business on Facebook. Then you're mad when somebody say something to you. So the point I'm making is this, the personality types, people will be in your presence and in your essence as long as they can get something from you. And my question is, who took our money? Who took the baby 17000 dollars? And they say they really don't know how much money she took over there with her. Customs knows. How about this? FBI, if y'all listening, go to Customs and find out how much money she declared when she came. Because y'all all know her money's missing because she paid for the villa for all six of them. And when you look at the video, you can see the fights or whatever, like it was planned. But the sickening part is two of y'all or possibly three of y'all was recording this. None of y'all jumped up and said, y'all leave her the fuck alone. The fuck is this? None of y'all said that. You weak bitches. I hope. And then it was two to three guys there. Check it out, y'all. Check check out the story. It was three guys there, and one of those guys was her best friend. Nobody jumped in to stop it. Nothing. And then y'all told a lie. This one got y'all fucked up. Y'all told this lie that this baby died of alcohol poisoning. But y'all filmed what happened. <laughs> Idiots. So when I say things about this Enneagram... I think, I think about that when I think about Shaquella Robinson. And I want to say, rest well, my sister. We're not going to let your name go. And to Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, my condolences are for you both. I can't imagine not to just lose a child, but to lose a child in this horrific manner with her friends. Bitch, if y'all my friends, I don't need no enemies. And that's why... I'm not accessible. I can love you from a distance. I can love you, but everybody who's smiling in your face don't mean you good. And I've been through this situation. It didn't turn out the way that it happened with young Shanquella, the terrible situation. But the type of person I am, if you my friend and we going to Mexico, ain't shit about to happen to none of us if I'm standing there. I don't give a fucking one of us flip out. I'm going to punch that one in the goddamn face. And then, none of you, even they're, they're saying one of them was afraid. That's why that person was filming. Bitch, you wasn't too damn scared. If you were scared, let me tell you what you do. Listen to me clearly. Let me come in closer to the mic. This is what I would have done. If I'm so scared, soon as the fuck... I got off the plane and got away from them back in the United States. I'd have been calling three letters. I don't give a fuck. FBI, CIA, um, GEO. I don't give a fuck. This is what's happened. Here go the videos right here. And I filmed it because I wanted y'all to have evidence. And I'm so scared of them because I thought they was going to do it to me too. I'd have been the first motherfucker on all y'all asses because you need your ass whoop, number one. And I promise y'all, y'all not going to Mexico to be tough and hard. This prisons in Mexico. Do you know Mexicans sneak across the border so they don't have to go to prison in Mexico? Criminals will sneak the fuck over here so they don't have to go. They say the prisons here in the United States of America are luxury hotels compared to the ones in Mexico. So therefore, I recommend that all six of these little bitches spend the rest of their lives, and they call it femicide, which I had never heard of, but apparently in Mexico... When there's a crime that takes place and someone is murdered or, or, or is deceased, and it's a woman, it carries a minimum 20-year sentence. 
It could be up to 50 years, but the minimum is 20. So one of y'all, two of y'all, three of y'all, four of y'all, five of y'all, or fucking six of y'all gonna get a minimum 20 years and it's well deserved. Now y'all might be thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, Goddess Candace, you so much love and light, this and that. Let me tell you something, if it was my kid, it wouldn't be nothing left. Wouldn't be nothing left. Because how dare you? And the irony kicker is she paid for the trip where she was unfortunately killed. So y'all have to watch these people around here. And the truth of it is, I can love you all day long, but bitch, I ain't going to let you hurt me. And I'm very, very well aware that there's people who hate me because they ain't me. I'm very, very well aware of there are people who have played to be my friends, hurt my feelings. But warnings were there, and we ignore warnings with people, don't we sometimes, y'all, under the precepts of love? We ignore warnings. Oh, that's just who they are. But understand this, young people, old people, dogs, cat, horses, fish, if you listening, dolphins, I'm going to say this. People will pretend as long as they can benefit. And people, snakes, will be right up under you. And when you have no more purpose, no more purpose, they will leave your ass high and dry. They will tell you anything out of their mouth. So for me these days, I go off my intuition, my gut feeling. If it don't feel right, my gut, so sorry. Yeah, I love you. Friends, family, it don't matter. I am a spiritual being having a human experience, and the first law of nature is self-preservation. Now, I ain't hating you. I ain't mad at you. I ain't going to try to hurt you unless you come over here, then I'm going to defend myself. I'm still not going to try to hurt you. I'm going to defend myself. And if you happen to get hurt in the process crossing the line, you're bad. I'm going to self-defend. I'm going to defend myself. So, once again, that's my take on that. And, and, and it fell in line, definitely, with this, this personality Enneagram chart. Because, I, like I say, my podcast was supposed to be on Shaquella, but everybody was doing such a great job. I wanted to wait because I was really angry about it. It's only two things, y'all, that have really made me really, 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 really angry and upset. Number one, Sandra Bland. Say her name. Sandra Bland, I've made an oath that I will never stop saying your name. And Shaquella Robinson. This is the most ridiculous things that I have ever seen that have touched my spirit. It hurt my soul, y'all. It hurt my soul. And if it didn't hurt yours, something's wrong with you. You one of them people, them ones that set her up. And I heard somebody say, I don't, I don't think it was planned. I think it might have been an accident. I think it was planned. That's my opinion. That's my thought. You could say whatever. Because the videos that they was filming in the villa, when she was walking around, Shanquella was the only one filming videos, and she came in. She said, where y'all at? Where y'all at? They were supposed to be going skinny tipping, allegedly. Where y'all at? And if you look at the video, she go in the room, and they all in there together. What the fuck was you bitches in there talking about? She said, I know it ain't taking y'all that long to get undressed. She all happy and shit to be in Mexico. She didn't pay for this trip. Her and her homies about to go down there. She had no idea what was coming. So I say to y'all, be aware, be mindful. And I say to you bitches out there, that's like these fake ass friends Shanquilla had. You gonna get yours too. You gonna get yours too. I am not under the illusion that everybody loves me. Like I said, we hit 30,000 plus downloads the other day. This is happening fast for me, guys. December 20th will make one year that I started this podcast, and I'm so honored and grateful and humble. And people are really picking up what I'm putting down. But I'm not under the illusion that people are happy for me. As much as I may want people to be happy for me, that's not why I do this. I'm happy for me. I am a independent generational wealth builder. At this point in time in my life, y'all, I get to put my own music out 
which I own, produce, I master, own all the copyrights, <laughs> I mix, I do it all. I get to put my own lyrics out. Why? Because I'm a lyricist. I get to speak my truth through this podcast. I get to create generational wealth through so many different things that I am doing in my life. And for you haters out there, if that bothers you, get up, get out and do something. That's what Macy Gray told you. If that bothers you, so fucking what? Stop being a hater. And go do something with yourself. You know, I understand, like Cat Williams say, haters got their place. Haters got their purpose. I get you. Haters make you greater. And that's why I tell y'all always, I appreciate y'all. But this case here with these haters, with Shanquella, they all need to get it. None of them are innocent. And I don't think there's a varying degree. See, Mexico was different from the United States, y'all. I don't think there's a varying degree in the crime in, in the in the crime of who hit the fate who hit her with the fatal blow or those who stood there and watched. Because all of y'all came back to this motherfucking states and you lied. You even lied to the people in Mexico. And it's alleged that the police were paid off down there because they didn't want to get in trouble with tourism. And it's alleged that the hotel was paid off. And it's alleged that the coroner was paid off. It's alleged. We gonna see. I'm interested to see what comes out, y'all. Okay. Once again, Shanquella, rest in peace. Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, my deepest sympathy and condolences come out for you. But Mrs. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, I saw y'all on TV. And I know you guys were being first of all dealing with, with, with the with the anger and the hurt and the sadness of losing your child. But Mrs. Robinson, you look like you wanted to say this. I'm, I'm not saying you wanted to say this, Mrs. Robinson, okay? But you look like you wanted to say this. You funky-ass motherfucking bitches done kill my child. I'm going to fuck y'all up. And I really wish she could. But you know what, Mrs. Robinson? Mexico going to fuck them up. And I am, for one, in agreement with all of them spending the rest of their lives in the Mexican jail. And, guys, I'm going to give y'all some advice, all six of you, the Cabo Six, as they call you, in the news. Y'all better learn some Spanish. You better learn some Spanish. Okay? While y'all hiding out, y'all better be on your phones looking at Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. Learn you some Spanish words besides C si and no. Because uh, y'all going to be locked up for a long ass time. And that's what you deserve. Okay? All right. So, Soul Tribe, I have enjoyed being with y'all today. Breaking down this Enneagram, once again, like I said, this is sacred geometry at its finest. So these are tools for you to better help yourself and better improve yourself and better have uplifting and self-healing within yourself. Remember, guys, allow the journey to be just as rewarding as the destination. You hear me? The brain is the only receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of the core, but I know it exists. That is from Nikola Tesla. And for those of you who are out here reporting, and those of you who are out here giving love, say this to yourself, who are doing the right thing. I'm gonna leave y'all with this mantra. I am going to be telling a different story very soon. A story of how miracles have found me. A success story filled with so much inspiration. I will give so much hope to so many people when they see how much I overcame and still came out on top. My life is a movie and I am the main character. All right, Soul Tribe. Once again, I love you. I love you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. That is all I got for you this evening. And I will talk to y'all soon. Peace, love, light. And be good to yourself. Peace.